When we get into commercial roofing, we choose a roofing manufacturer that we like to work with. But the most important relationship in that is with the rep. Let's talk about working with the rep. Hi, this is Daniel Laxtons, and you're listening to the Roofing Business Builder Podcast. And go ahead and hit subscribe right now and click like and hit the bell so that way you'll be notified when another amazing episode comes out. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about working with a manufacturer's rep. But before we get into that, let's talk about an intention for this episode. The intention for this episode is I am grateful for those that are helping grow my business. I am grateful for those helping to grow my business. When you look around you and you see you know, your spouse, maybe you see your partners or you look at some of the employees, different ones. When you're in the commercial roofing industry, you have to have a manufacturer, maybe a, a few different manufacturers and they will have your best interest in mind to help you grow your business. When you grow, they grow. Hold that intention that you're grateful for those that are helping you to grow your business. This week, my special guest is Wes Neal. Wes Neal's been in the roofing industry for many years. Our friendship goes way back because we're both separate owners of our own independent repping agencies, but uh, representing the same manufacturers. Now, let's get into my interview with Wes Neal. Wes Neal. Having had that knowledge, I'm helping somebody, and that's a, it's a fun thing to do. It's a it lot is. of fun. That's where yeah. life is, is when you're out there doing something and, and helping people. That's yeah. the beauty. Hey, my special guest is Wes Neal. Uh, Wes Neal's got years and years of experience in roofing and specifically in the manufacturer repping side of things. So, um, and you've done government contracts. You've had, yeah, several contractors that uh, you worked with on projects for the government, federal ba uh, military bases, right? Yes. And what's uh, beautiful is that there's a lot of knowledge that we still have that we can share to help people to be smart about things. So today we're talking about how to work with a manufacturer's rep to get the the most benefit out of that rep. Uh, maybe we might talk about some pitfalls and and things like that. But um, you know, th there's a th there's something really important and special if you're in the commercial roofing industry about working with a manufacturer's rep. What what are some benefits? Do you think, Wes? Well. In our experience in the companies that you and I both are aware of and my experience with it, and I had worked previously also as a manufacturer's rep, uh, another different manufacturer in a totally different um, arena. And uh, the, the thing is, is that the advantage is that you have someone in front of you. Um, there's a commercial I see about uh, advertised about insurance and they got the robot. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of companies are going to the answer the machine and punch this button and get that right there, and then you're lost. Um, you, you can't talk to someone. That rep is the person that you have the connection with, and you can converse with him, and he can take that to people up the ladder that may help him. Um, depends on how the company that you're representing, how they operate. Sometimes that uh, they value the rep more than other companies do. And then the, the, but your rep is a person that's just like you. We're in business as an independent rep. You pay your, all the expenses. And all you do is you get a piece of the sale, probably a minor, minor part of that sale, mm -hmm. but, you pay your you you pay your own way, and so you are vested in what's going on. If you're a good rep, now, yeah, there are people that think reps all they do is ride around and, and have lunch and dinner with people and, and take them out. So it's a part of it. 
part of that, but but the, that that's all you do. But that's not. There's a lot behind the scene. My days were um, were started at probably four in the morning, and uh, and didn't didn't end until ten or eleven at night. Uh, the the thing is, you have to build a relationship, and you earn that respect. And when you have that, uh, in my case, I've had several people that I've now retired have continued to talk to me mm -hmm. and uh, continue to um, ask for things, you know, questions and uh, not so much related to the product, but to business itself, which through experience and, and training, I was able to help them. Absolutely. And what's beautiful about the uh, being a rep, we, um, we get to see how things work because you know you license uh, one guy uh one company and they do really well you license another company and uh they crash and burn and so if you have a really good rep that's you know i've licensed over 120 people and or 20 companies and what was really interesting is you get to see what was working for the ones that are successful and what's not working you know, for the ones that are, are that, that crash and fail or the, the sometimes the greed or certain things that they wouldn't do that they should have done. And then they paid the consequences for that. And so when, when you're a roofer, that's really going down a path, getting into commercial or what have you, sometimes you run into situations that you don't know what to do next. Uh, there's, and you can't Google it. You can't, and it, you can't necessarily call the manufacturer, but if you talk to the rep and it's a rep like us, you and me, then that rep would have already experienced the situation, this problem, this concern that you're going through and if, and uh, experienced it through another company and know the successful path to get you to where you need to go. And, and within an instant, right, you, you can have that information if you have that relationship. You're right. You're absolutely right. And the thing about it is when you interview that individual for, to set them up, uh, you are putting, I felt like you were putting your name, mm -hmm. your person on the line with the company. I've interviewed him. I said that he's capable. You didn't say he was going to be successful, but I said he is capable because I have interviewed him. I've talked with him and you try to get, you don't dive into his um, business so deep that he's giving you uh, important information that he shouldn't, but you need to. And I remember one in particular that he was going after some low hanging fruit, which were uh, some restaurants and a general contractor. He said uh, the, the uh, contractor I was dealing with said that he had been promised he would get all 18 of them. And I told him, I said, don't build your business on that. Mm -mm. That's going to be a uh, bid situation. That general contractor has said, maybe did say that. I can't say that he did. Well, they, they do that to dangle fruit, uh, to, to get you to lower yeah. your price. It's like, well, if you do this one for free, I got you know 17 more behind it. And they, I've, I've heard that one over and over and, you know, you know. Uh, get, well, get them all excited that to, to do a whole a job for free, basically yeah, make yeah, no and, profit. And this gentleman, you know, he's called him. He said, he's a friend of mine. And I said, I can't, I I'd actually told him, I will not set you up if you go after those because it's not something. And it's very visible with the manufacturer because this is a segment of their business that they do and pay attention to it. It's a, it's a special uh, part of their business. And he assured me he wouldn't, and after he was set up, we were actually leaving the office. And set up, he, what Wes is meaning by set up is we actually give them a license to use yes. the product. And it's very difficult for a rep to just give that license to someone because our reputations will be tied to that person. If they make mistakes or uh, give our product a black eye, then we lose money. And so we don't do that. But go ahead. Sorry, Wes. <laughs> no, exactly right. And that's what I was getting at is my reputation. Um, with the company will come into question if he fails. Mm -hmm. What it, 
you know, why did I not, why did I set him up first? And why didn't you work with him and train him and get him through this? And so anyway, he turns to me and I've already set him up. And as you know, it was harder to get un mm -hmm. uh, connected uh, or uh, close their account than it was to set him up. And so in doing so, he turned to me and he said, Oh, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going ahead and going to do those 18. Well, he never got them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was probably a year later that I retired and he was still struggling and I could not, I could not connect with him. And I tried desperately to connect with him and offer help. I even offered to go on sales calls with him. And that comes to the respect. It, you've got to have respect and you have to earn it. And even though I was doing what I thought was everything, and I do not lie. I will not lie. And, uh, you know, I told him how we could work, what I could do for him in terms of going out. I have the product knowledge. I've been trained with it. I've been on the roof. I'll walk roofs with you. But he just wouldn't leave the office to do it. And so, consequentially, he's basically gone out of business. And that really bothers me because there was potential there. He knew about roofing, but he just wouldn't go in that direction that needed to do and, and put the effort into it. So uh, trust is a very big part of it. Uh, returning phone calls. I, in my experience, in my years, it got to where the contractors would call me. And of course, if I'm talking to a customer, I would not answer my phone. I had me, I would mute it and I would not, but it got to where that my good contractors wouldn't even leave me a message because they knew I was going to return their call. I was famous for that, I thought. And so it, that was a, a, a kind of a glitch or a cliche or whatever you want to call it. It's something that I always was very fond of doing because they respected me for it. And if I tell you I'm going to return your call, I'm going to return your call. And so uh, that's, a, that, that's the thing that a rep can do is help you in ways that um, – you know, smaller companies don't have, they might not have a salesman. They should, the rep, I would, I would always go with them if they needed me to. And mm -hmm. then you might see something that you could help them with. I, I was uh, thinking about this. It was after I retired in the local town, which I live here in. Uh, a good friend of mine had a restaurant, small restaurant, small town. And he said, uh, can you help me with that? I said, sure, I'll be glad to. So I was talking to him about products, different products. And uh, he had three companies he already had bids on. And the first one, the first three pages were all legal stuff that you can't do this, you can do this. And I said, uh, you need to let that one go on to, to the sideways, okay? The other two, I knew the owners very personally, both companies. And I talked to their salesman and I said, have you looked under the roof. And both of them said to me in our conversations, what are you talking about? And I said, is there insulation under that roof? You're required to have so much insulation. Is, is there any under that roof? Uh, I haven't looked. One of them said, I'm going to look. The other one said, nah, I'm not going to check it. I said, you're talking about doing a layover. That roof is ancient. You need to pull that all off. Now, the owner, I tried to tell him this, and he just stared at me and said, what are you talking about? And I don't understand any of this. And I, they said, I said, you're going to put a pitch on there with a lot of insulation, tapered insulation. Maybe you need to look and see if it's in the roof and not have to spend that money. The second one said, I'm going to look. And he said, yes, it's built into it. And when he got through, he was a third less than the other contractor, and he got the business. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that we bring to the table, you know, the unseen that we've experienced and we're not there in the, the, the immediate battle and we're not, we, we can look and see what we, you know, we, we know what we're talking about. Let's just put that away. Yeah. We've seen it before because we're exposed to so many customers, our own personal customers and when they get into a situation. So a lot of times if you're a, a person that just became a, a roofing rep, 
So, you know, the, the, we ha- I have a lot of different type of listeners here. So sometimes you'll have a business owner. I, one time um, someone was responding or asked a question. They said, well, you didn't, you didn't explain this or this. And I go, well, that's because you're a business, you own the building. And I made this education video for the roofer to know that they, they should be using tapered systems or crickets if you have a ponding water situation, because most manufacturers don't cover that warranty for ponding water. So I I always want to put information out there that will not only help the roofer to gain more experience and and make more money, but also for the building owners (laughs) to, to not get screwed by inexperienced roofer making a mistake. But we've seen so much because of the, to grow our businesses as reps, we had to, we had to see a lot more and we do see a lot more. So we, you know, when you're younger as a rep, you don't know the answer to you, your customer will call and say, well, what do I, what do I do in this situation? And you're like, I don't know, but it's okay because then you can then find someone like us or find someone within the network that will know. And then you learn that. And so it, we learn quickly over a period of a few years as a rep, you learn so much that you have the answers to almost any question that comes up. But if you don't, we can find it through an engineer or find it through, you know, someone else, you know what I mean? Your, your network of other reps and friends. Well, it's just like you and I, we've been friends for years and we uh, represented the same company for years. And the thing is we networked and we've kept in touch and you and I both, you've got friends and I do too, that have had left that company and continue to stay in touch. And you, through that networking, uh, you get knowledge and you can pick up the phone and call and say, Hey, Hey Joe, what about this? Tell me about what you do. And there's so much you can be the contractor needs to trust you and you need to earn that trust. And it's sometimes that's hard to do because different people have different levels and different directions that they go with their companies. And, uh, um, I had a contractor that uh, became a dear friend of mine. Dear friend most of, of mine. my most of my contractors, my top ones, were all really close friends, and they we still yeah. are. You know, we're well, still this, in contact. This, this, this gentleman, I would go on the roof with him, and he would get furious. I <laughs> like, I like, but he don't. You, you always make me do this. You always make me do this. And the joy of my life was one day, we were standing on a roof. And he said to me, you know, Wes, if you do it the way they tell you to do, it'll work. (laughs) (laughs) To this day, I beam when I think about that because I succeeded. I didn't get in. When he would scream and holler, you just, I liked the guy. I got along with him. I mean, he would just voice his opinion. He was loud. And he was just, we became a great friend. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going back to the state that I was in. And uh, I've told him, I said, because we were on the phone, I said, we're going to lunch when I come back. And uh, he said, great. But those are the, the the moments that it's not the money. It's not that you succeeded in explaining what the product and what the company could do for you and what it would do. And to, to have that was just phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, it's very rewarding when you, yeah. When you know that you've, had a share in their success and their, their growth. And then when they come back and say, I appreciate you, I really do appreciate you. Cause it, I mean, the money would always just come, but, um, but you and I sold millions of dollars worth millions and millions every year of, of product. And we were instrumental instrumental in, in having our roofers become successful, you know? Yes. It's, and you know, you, you mentioned government. Um, <clears throat> I've been, Involved with the government uh, for several years, several years, and um, they go by a different set of rules. And you're a property owner too. I mean, you own you own buildings that the government actually leases from you. Yes, for over so, almost so you've had years. you've had a lot of experience. Not only you yeah. know because you're well, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's um it's a different different. Um, than doing roofing on, a, on a, say, a military base, but I've done both of them. And uh, the, the roofing on the military base, um, 
you 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 open the door or if you can get the door opened um in my case i got i got uh i was invited and uh we had to compete and it was a the, the presentation was made well, multiple times to different people. And the government has uh, a way of selecting contractors that doesn't always provide a capable contractor. And so I had a chance to, to bring contractors to them that would be uh, subcontractors that knew the product and could put it on. And that was a big help. And then those contractors, um, one of them became a uh, HUD zone type uh, approved contractor. And so he could bid on other things and other products. But um, it's a very, it's a very, uh, uh, I won't say hard, but you are, scrutinized and uh you are questioned why and you have to compete for that that business and it's uh, i won't say it's not the product the product has to be good and this but you have to be able to put it on in a time frame that meets their requirements and if you don't then it becomes a problem and you're asked to step aside or you're not allowed to bid and so, or you're penalized. Yeah. People want to get into to uh, government work, but then it, it's that um, chicken before the egg. Because if if you don't have a, enough experience under your belt and you make some mistakes, then you've ruined your reputation with the government. Uh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> it's better to get the government. From my experience, doesn't really want a bunch of people coming and bidding. They want to get somebody solid that can get the job done and take care of it and do it right. And, and that doesn't have to be in roofing and it's in construction. I've seen it several times in other products that people would bid it, they'd get it, and then it was too much for them. Mm -hmm. And their intent was good, but they didn't succeed because they couldn't get it done. And when it when it piled up on them, it was too big and it piled up on them and just somebody had to step in and take it or you know, take it over. And you once you burnt your bridge, it's hard to get that bridge unburnt. Yeah, and and so it's it's you have to pay attention. You have to know what you're doing. And it, well, it's kind of like it's kind of like you you get a haircut. Um, do you get a different person to cut your hair every time, or do you finally find someone that's like no headaches? This person does it the way I want it every time, and that's the way it is. And you know, in the roofing industry commercial roofing industry there's relationships as long as you're charging a fair price and i mean even if you're slightly higher they're going to choose you over someone else because you uh you did a good job you know yeah, they know what to expect in in uh everyday life in your commercial roofing that relationship with the contractor to the building owner is astronomical it's it's a a deal my buildings that i have that i own they're commercial buildings i will assure you that i've got for every building i've got a gentleman that takes care of it for me mm -hmm. matter of fact the building manager doesn't call me he'll call them okay and they <laughs> so you got them trained <laughs> yeah well they and and i don't i don't try to jip them out of money i told one the other day there was a fan inside the building, it's an office building, and the fan started smoking. Well, it's been in there for 25 years. <laughs> and they they turned it off. And this gentleman calls me and I mean texts me and says, we've got uh, something smoking on the ceiling. So immediately I called him and he says, oh, it's just the fan. And I told him to turn it off. I'm on my way over there. He says, it needs a new fan. I'm sure. Do you want me to get it? You want to get it? I said, you get it. I'll pay you to get it. And I want him to be profitable. I want everybody to be profitable. I'm not going to overpay. Mm -mm. I'm not going, I don't, I don't really want to underpay because I want that man to be willing to do the work for me, a fair price for the product I'm buying, whether it's service or a product. And, and uh, it's worked very well for me in that. It is. And it's finding those people like you and me <laughs> and like, 
the 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 customers that we had licensed, I I know that if I had a bad gut feeling on someone, I usually ended up paying for it. You know, whenever I saw dollar signs seeing that maybe uh, this roofer uh, claims that they have some some good relationship going, but then you had that bad gut feeling. But um, but the thing is, is I'll give you an example too of uh, very similar to what you just said. One of my my number one contractor for years and years would never do the wrong thing. Um, as a matter of fact, so he opened up a new office in San Antonio, and then he um, he had this. You know, he had some really good cust- you know customers that owned lots of buildings, and so uh, he ha- was going to hire a subcontractor in that region. So he got a hold of this one subcontractor, and the he they they looked at the project and they said, okay, yeah, well. So the subcontractor says, well, how much you gonna pay me? He goes, well, he says, well, how much, how much do you charge? He goes, oh, I don't know. He goes, what? He says, you know, you don't know your numbers. He says, you know, he says, uh, he says, well, how do you get paid by other, other roofing contractors? He goes, I used to do it for what they do. He says, well, how much were they paying you? And he threw out this price. He goes, he goes, you can't make a living on that. He says, how do you pay for your insurance? How? He goes, he's, he pulled out and started writing down numbers for him. And he says, nope. He says, I'm going to pay you 10 more dollars a square than what you, what you were saying. You know, so this, um, this person, this roofer, a uh, great heart would not allow a subcontractor to be underpaid either. Wasn't going to overpay him, but he pointed out and showed him how to to know your pricing, to know what it costs to run your trucks. What if you have an office, the electricity, you know, you got to have your profit and overhead in there, overhead, especially, you know, you have some fixed costs involved. Uh, but if you're in relationships with people like all of us, where we're not going to let you do the wrong thing, we're not going to, um, you know, it's like, it just, it's like, wow, I'll make extra money. But then if you hurt that person by, because they're stu- not stupid, but uh, just not, they're not educated enough to know that they can't do the job for that price. And if we're just all transparent, well, that, you know, I'd rather train this person if they're an honest person. And then I have consistency and we all make money and, and because I, I, I want them to make money. You said that earlier too. We want you to make money. <laughs> then we make absolutely money. and then when you build that re- that relationship now you when you do that then you have their respect uh you you know that you're dealing in a truthful relationship that you uh, you you've you've connected and when you ask them to do something i had a building that was remodeling it and the gentleman says i'm, I'm not gonna do it i begged him i begged him because i did not trust a contractor I didn't know. And, and he says, okay, for us, I'll do it. And we went without a glitch. You know, he called me and say, I've done this. I've done that. And I said, I'll see you in about two days. And I'd go see him and it'd be done what he had done. And so it, it makes your life easier mm-hmm. when you do that. And, uh, you know, it's gathering people around you that know what they're doing and will do it for you. And you just got to, you got to take care of them. That's all there is to it. You got to take care of them. And uh, it makes life a lot easier. It really does. And as a rep, you've got to weed through those that, yes, I will. No, I won't. And I'd, I'd like to put this out. Reps, in my opinion, are not lead finders. Mm -mm. If I've got that relationship with you, then I and I know that you'll get it done, then I'm going to give that to you. I'll give you that lead. But don't come to me and say to me, hey, you get any leads from me today? No, sir, I don't. Don't have any at all. I'm going to give those leads to the person I trust, that I have respect for, and that they have it vice versa for me, and they understand. Um, so, you know, to say, oh, just because you you have been signed up to work and sell you a product, uh, then that doesn't give you the rights that I'm going to just put my name on it and you fail at it. But, you know, I think we used to say, you know, bring us two or three projects and we can then set you up. But it's, it's a, it's a, for a rep, it's a tough situation, you know, because you want to grow, you want to have 
good contractors, but yet you don't want to overload your territory. You want people that will do their job and uh, see that they're profitable. Absolutely. So that was my interview with Wes Neal. And Wes Neal, he's helped so many roofing contractors, and you can see what a pure heart he has. But the whole point about this podcast uh, or this episode was that we want to utilize the reps because they have knowledge that we don't have, especially if you're getting into the product, uh, you're going to run into situations where you don't know what to do, or there's just different things, uh, even sales. He even mentioned that, you know, bring the rep with you to sell projects because they learn different techniques. And then as you work with the rep and listen to the way they speak with the customer about the product, then it'll quickly get into your mind. And now it's time for Did You Know? Did you know know that working with reps not only increases your income, but it also increases your close rates. Now, there are some statistical studies that were done that help to prove this to be the, the case. According to a survey by Manufacturers Agents National Association, companies that work with manufacturer representatives have seen a 22% increase within their sales within that very first year. Another study uh, by the same organization found that 83% of companies that work with manufacturer representatives reported an increase in sales and 72% reported that they increased their profits. Also, a, a study by the Sales League Consulting uh, says that companies that use manufacturer representatives had a 17.8% higher rate on sales opportunities than those that did not. So when you're helping uh, a manufacturer's rep by bringing some of your customer base to them, then they'll also share their leads with you. So it's a two-way street. So do take advantage of your manufacturer's rep. All right, that's it for the show, guys. Uh, Appreciate you listening. Remember, if you need some help, uh, go over to roofingbusinessbuilder.com and sign up for a Calendly call with me and see if you might be a good fit for the Ultimate Reality Surfing Program. We meet every Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central, and it's kind of like a mastermind. All of us roofers, we get together. We talk about the things that we're working on and we talk about our wins and we also share information that will help you to grow your business into the millions and go ahead and hit subscribe right now and click like and hit the bell so that way you'll be notified when another amazing episode comes out so until next time i don't always consult on commercial roofing but when i do i make millionaires stay wealthy my friends (laughs) 